Marcus Tanner thousands of people demonstrated against the confiscation of ballot boxes and charges on unarmed civilians during Sunday's referendum on Catalonia's secession from Spain. Photo Santi Palacios of the EU has been taken widely to task for its silence over the violence in Catalonia. What is just as surprising, some might say, is the even deeper silence of the individual Balkan countries. After all, many of those states, emerged only recently onto the map of Europe thanks to rebellions against the rule of larger entities, and using much the same language and arguments that the Catalans use now. But if the comparison between Catalonia today and Croatia, Montenegro, and Kosovo in the 1990s and 2000s seems fairly clear to many outsiders, it doesn't seem so obvious to any of those countries' governments. One might think that Kosovo, in particular, would feel a kindred spirit for Catalonia, one formerly oppressed province rooting for another, but not a bit of it. As Burton reported this week, the only statement to be drawn from a senior government official was that Kosovo's practice is not to comment on the internal affairs of other countries. It's not exactly a ringing endorsement of Catalonia's right to self-determination. But perhaps we should not be so surprised. One striking characteristic of modern independence movements is how uninterested they are in each other's causes. This was the case also back in the late 19th century in Britain, when the pioneers of Scottish and Welsh nationalism hurried over to Ireland, only to be bitterly disappointed in their hope that the Irish nationalists would take interest in their own causes and form some kind of joint front. But the Irish, it turned out, were interested in their own independence from Britain, not in that of Scotland or Wales. Once they got their state, in the 1920s, they made no attempt, whatever to act as champions of other independence movements, either in Europe or anywhere else. More recently, Scotland's nationalists showed they could be equally self-absorbed. In 1999, at the height of the conflict in and over Kosovo, logically, one might have assumed that the main unionist parties in the UK would side with Serbia against its rebellious province while the Scottish nationalists would side with the independence seeking Kosovars. In reality, it was the other way round. The main British parties, Labour and Conservative, championed the Kosovars, while the Scottish nationalists, under Alex Salmond, obsessed with their feud with London, led the case against intervention, accusing NATO and the UK of illegality. Within the former Yugoslavia itself, the various independence movements have never seemed to care much about each other, Slovenia and Croatia declared independence together. But the moment the Yugoslav army agreed to pull out of Slovenia, the Slovenes became virtually indifferent to the fate of the Croats. The Croats, in turn, mainly saw the independence of neighboring Bosnia as a chance to grab some of its territory and form a new mini-state that would join them, eventually. The Croats were interested in other independence movements in the region, but only for their own purposes. At one point, when the war inside Croatia was going particularly badly, the Croatian president, Franjo Tajman, offered to arm and train the Kosovo Albanians if they would start a southern front and so divert the Serbs from his own country. I remember putting that suggestion to the Kosovo Albanian leader, Ibrahim Rugova, in an interview and seeing his eyes widen. I don't recall his exact words, but I do recall the gist, which was that Kosovo Albanians were not mad enough to want to sacrifice themselves to save Croatia. In reality, achieving independence is like a race. You run alone in crossing the finishing line alone, not as part of a team effort. And, once across that line, you don't look back at those who haven't made it. That is why the Irish were never that interested in the Scots, the Slovenes in the Croats, and so on. Kosovo's current leaders, Hashim Thaisi and Ramish Haradinaj, probably feel a twinge of sympathy for the plight of the Catalans. But their main interest now lies in pushing Kosovo's claim to be treated like an adult member of the Club of Independent Countries. In their carefully pressed suits, they are keen to put the days when they wore green fatigues well behind them. As the silence in the EU and the Balkans shows, the Catalans are in this on their own. Marcus Tanner is an editor of Balkan Insight and the author of Albania's Mountain Queen, Edith Durham and the Balkans Tourists. The opinions expressed in the comments section are those of the authors only and do not necessarily reflect the views of Byrne.